Hello, welcome back to the Spectrasonics Omnisphere tutorial. Today we're doing uh, another preset deep dive, but with a slight difference, because I want to have a look at the multis. We've not really dealt with multi very much in this video tutorial series, because I don't personally use it. I treat it more as a performance tool, something that you would want to use or investigate more if you were playing the, um, the synth as a live instrument for stuff like keyboard splitting and the ability to uh, switch between sounds very quickly. I don't need that stuff. I use it for writing songs. But that said, there is stuff in there that we should probably have a look at. And so we're going to spend some of today's episode investigating some of the, the, the features specific to multi. So I've loaded this sound, xylophonic strings. And as you can see from the mixer, we've got two different parts in use. And the biggest thing we have to be aware of when we're dealing with multis is the live and stack options. Now, as I say, we've not dealt with these previously. Live I'm not going to cover today because they're not in use on this preset. And if you're using it as a performance tool, I'll leave you to look that up yourself. I don't use it at all. But stack is in use. And this is the page by which those two different parts are mixed together. In addition to the mixer itself, where we control stuff like overall volumes and pan. The stack page tells us how those sounds are mixed together. So because we've got both parts covering the entire keyboard range, every key that I press on the keyboard is going to trigger both of those sounds. But you can see that they're also synced to the host tempo. If I play um, C to C descending, I just played eight notes then. You didn't hear eight notes. And the reason for that is because uh, the synth is synced to the to the host tempo and will only play notes that fall into that pattern. If I hold a note down long enough, then it catches up and kind of jumps on the train. We can change the um, beat assignment, uh, switch it to trigger immediate. Can you see the interface doesn't update? I don't know if this is some Friday afternoon programming, but if you change the uh, display type, then it updates properly, but it doesn't do it live, apparently. Don't know why. So that's a bit unfortunate. Something also worth mentioning, if it's in next beat mode and you turn stack mode off, the thing still triggers in next beat mode. So you really do have to be aware that this is kind of having a pervasive effect on the entire multi. But now that I've turned next beat triggering off, I'll play the same descending octave. And now the keyboard is responding accurately to me. That's what I want. Just as a final note before we move on, I don't want to spend too long. These parts, if I just turn stack mode on again, if you click in the bottom corner of the rectangles, you can make them um, bigger or smaller. And this is how you say, you know, have the xylophonia operating on the lower half of the keyboard and the tuned little spring on the upper. And if you pick it up in the top right hand corner, you can have fades. But aside from saying that, we'll kind of move on from stack mode. The next thing that we need to be aware of when we're dealing with a multi is that we have FX at the multi level as well. So this um, plugin installed on Auxiliary Bus 1 is available for use. Of course, I've picked one that isn't be <laughs> being sent to at all by the two parts. Let's have a look at Auxiliary 2 because that is in use. So this delay unit is in use by both presets. Turn the delay off. We still have a delay, and we'll get to that shortly, but we don't have this delay. So there are two different delays on the sound. So you need to be aware that these master FX cover the entire multi, and so multiple different parts can route to them. I'm going to turn them both off so that we don't get too confused. The other thing to be aware of is that as soon as I turn stack mode off, we lost the second part because it's currently assigned to channel two. And in stack mode, all sounds get played. Whereas as soon as I turn stack mode off, we reverted back to our MIDI channel assignment settings. And now we're only hearing the first sound. So if I really wanna hear both of those sounds, I'm gonna to need to map that to channel one. And there they both are. So I'm kind of deconstructing the multi, really. At this point, we've got two almost completely independent parts that happen to be playing simultaneously, but we've thrown a lot of the functionality away 
that we might choose to use the multi four in the first place. But you know, we're deconstructing the sound, so that's the most important thing. And we'll keep on going with this butchery and get down to a single sound again. At this point, we're essentially into standard deconstruction territory. We're now dealing with a single sound and we're gonna look at this sound just like we would with any other. Now the sound itself is relatively straightforward. We've got this xylophonia sample and let's not use part two, shall we? Because that's already in use, but we can use part three. And again, root it to channel one. So uh, we've got this tiny little pip sound. Now that's not the full story of what this um, sound source sounds like, because part three has a fairly unusual looking ADSR. If I increase the sustain to maximum, that's what the sound source really sounds like without any envelope being applied to it. So you always have to be aware, the more familiar you get with the synth, the fewer of these pitfalls you'll, you'll drop into. So that's our sound. That's the raw sound source, that's what it sounds like. So back in the part itself, something's giving us that pattern. It's probably the arpeggiator, and yeah, we're, we're, I'm pretty sure it's there. But just for now, we're gonna mute all of that stuff, find out how simple the raw sound itself is. Pretty simple. There's very little going on there. You can see we've got no filter. Our, our standard, very quick glance at the main page, nothing there. Our envelope, tiny bit of decay and no sustain. That's what's giving us these really short staccato sounds. If I brought more of this in, we get that natural sound source that we heard earlier. And so now we can jump into the modulation matrix and see what's going on over there. Now this first value, uh, the modulation wheel being assigned to amp env decay trim, I've got a little bit of a problem with this because there's no visual evidence in the graphical user interface that this is assigned. And it says in the manual that this is one of the settings. There are multiple modulation values that you can access in the matrix, but you don't get to see in the interface. In fact, if we have a look at the envelope sliders, when you right click on them, they're not, they're not modulatable at all. And there's no evidence that anything's being done the, to the decay on this envelope. I don't know why Spectrosonics have decided to implement it in this way, but there you go, we'll have to live with it. So we've got this um, decay trim, that's basically like a relative based attenuation of the decay assigned via the modulation wheel. So mod, mod wheel turned all the way down, and up, much, much shorter. So we've we've pulled the decay down. If I play some really slow notes so that I'm giving any decay that we happen to have in the sound is having the full opportunity to do its thing. Because if I play really staccato notes, then we're jumping straight to the release phase. And at maximum, modulation wheel maximum. Really, really short. So yeah, I would love there to be some visual evidence of that in the interface, but there isn't. And we've got two different outputs being assigned uh, to random one. And I've got a bit of a problem here as well because the harmonia mix makes no sense if the harmonia is off. Now, I get it. It's easy for us to turn the harmonia on. <laughs> That's, it's not beyond the wit of man to press an on button, but it seems like it's either an Easter egg where they say, you know, we've, we've put some modulation matrix settings in, turn the harmonia on and you'll get this good stuff. Or it's a preset design oversight where somebody was considering in, incorporating the harmonia and then left it behind. Who really cares? You know, it's at the end of the day, it's a, another option for us to employ. So this is gonna be random. Don't forget we're, we're set to random one here. So it's gonna pick various random different modulation values according to this range. So we're operating effectively over the entire range here. 
Now, it's a little bit tricky to catch this all on its own with something else being assigned to random one. So I'm just going to temporarily mute that one. And then we can really home in on the harmonia mix and hear what that's doing. There we go. So it's adding that extra harmonic an additional um, octave harmonic above. I've got no problem at all with Easter eggs. That's absolutely fine. But I'd kind of rather the harmonia be turned on. That, that's the sound that I'm quite happy to have as part of the preset. Moving on, the other one is the sample timbre. So let's find out whether or not it's crush or shift. It's shift. So this is going to be uh, adjusting the sample offsets according to the, the played pitch. We get all of these different variances, both of those effects together. It's nice. I'll leave the harmonia on, why not? Now let's uh, turn the arpeggiator back on. Now bear in mind the arpeggiator is designed to be played with multiple notes simultaneously and we're in down slash up mode here. So I'll press uh, three notes on the keyboard, C, E and G, to represent the C chord and it'll play C, E, G, E, C. And that's all in the context of the arpeggio that's, that's spinning in the background. And then finally, we get over to the effects units and let's have a look over here. So this is where we've got the other delay. Remember we turned one off in the multi and we still had one. I've got one here, turn that off. So that's just the arpeggiator on its own now. Bring the delay back in. There's more of it. And obviously, you know, we know what reverb does. No common FX. And so that's part one dealt with. So we've dealt with half of the multi sound. We're not dealing with layers here, we're dealing with parts. So we'll head back up to the multi, mute the first part, unmute the second part, and now hear what this is doing. Okay, same kind of business. Very quick glance, nothing spectacular there over to the tuned little spring two. Have a quick look at our envelope. Nice healthy sustain, so that's the genuine sound. Now that I've got that in my ear, get rid of it and back to the preset sound. So I can hear that there's clearly an arpeggio, I'll turn that off. And now we've got a very simple sound. No filter, similar kind of thing with the envelope with our small um, decay. And in the mod matrix, got a slightly different arrangement of sounds, but essentially the same kind of business going on. Modulation wheel all the way down. We're going to get as much decay as the standard presets giving us. Turn the wheel up. Very, very small. Now there's a trap that you can fall into here, which is to think that these random one settings, remember when we saw random one on the first part, are all synced together, they're not. Each part has its own independent modulation matrix. So the random values that are being generated for part one will have nothing to do with the random signals that are being generated for part two. Every single part is completely independent except within the context of what the multi does to it. So these random settings over here, we're dealing with the timbre. I'll just mute the other stuff. Oh, there we go. Some good variance in the sounds there. That's all coming from the sample timbre being shifted, just like the other part was. And then we've got a random assignment of pan as well. And you can see that in the output. 
screen just over here. Different heights of the left and right bars. Then we bring the arpeggiator back in. So again, I'm pressing C, E, G. And it's the arpeggiator velocities that are having the dominant effect. It doesn't really matter how hard I hit these keys, very little of that's getting through. No effects at all on this sound. Now, I want to reload the multi, but can you see, because I'm looking at a part, I'm currently in Patch Browser. So in order for me to reload my multi, I need to reselect the multi button. And then here is Xylophonic Springs, which I can select. It warns me that I'm going to throw away all of the settings on all of the parts that I've just made, which I'm quite happy to do. And now we've got those master effects back. Uh, we can see that we, we saw earlier that only the delay is actually in use. And we've also got our stack next beat mode. So if I press lots of really fast keys on the keyboard, we never actually hear any sound because we're not giving it long enough to catch the beat of the song. So if I just hold those three notes down and we have a look at the mixer, we can see both parts might want to do this kind of business. Accentuate, oh, that's nice. And that's the end of this video tutorial series. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do subscribe. It really helps the channel a lot. It helps me carry on making more videos like this. Hope to see you next time. Thanks.